Just watch the video. Okay. So, but were you able to complete lessons three? Yeah, I watched it. So towards the end, it's saying there's assignment. Okay. So okay. that's, yeah. So do you have any question from completing lesson three? Uh, not really. Okay. Yeah, not really. I think everything was clear. Okay. I, yeah, but I think um, Michelle has brought up some really great question that it will be good for us all to clarify on. It may help your own understanding or enhance your own understanding if you really understood it or maybe just refresh it if you clearly get it already. And then once we are done, we'll go ahead to run through some of the questions. All right, regarding, so uh, Michelle's first um, point was sprint planning time box. So Michelle was asking, so if a one month sprint, um, so if the time box for a one month sprint is eight hours, I mean, for sprint planning events, what would be the time box for a shorter sprint, Michelle? Was that your question? Yes. yes. Okay. So come to think of it, just do the math. If one month, if a sprint planning that is one month will take eight hours, if you divide the one month by two, if you have two week sprints that you are estimating approximately four hours for your sprint planning. Uh, okay. I wanted to know how you go about it. That if it's for four hours, is it that it will be 30 minutes a day? or you brainstorm no. for a four hour stretch, mm -mm. something the like entire, that. The entire four hours, you'll be there to do that planning. You can choose to take breaks. I mean, there is no strict wow. rule okay. around it, whatever works for you people. Okay. But the, the goal is that you have to get a plan ready before you can even start before that. You start. Okay. Yes. So you can choose to do 30 minutes and do have a five minutes break, do another 30 minutes and have a five, whatever works for you though. But trust okay. me, in reality, what happens on the ground, it's hardly ever true that team will go sit for four hours to be doing planning. Okay. It may happen if, if, if that's happening, then that's a problem instead. It means mm. that you're doing a terrible job with backlog refinement. Or your PO is doing a terrible job with keeping the product backlog healthy. That's why you would have to stay for four hours to do planning. If you're doing a good job with backlog refinement, a two week sprint, if, if it's too much, you take max about one hour, 30 minutes to do the planning. Because in reality, during that planning, again, if you are doing a good job with backlog refinement, you're just connecting to balance things up. So I need you to see backlog refinement as pre-planning meeting pre where you've done the most work. And then you come now on the day of the planning just to reaffirm that, okay, we think we are comfortable with these. And then maybe if anything has changed from, like that is from the time you did your refinement to the day of the sprint planning, maybe customers have asked for something else. And then maybe the PO will be communicating that at that time. And then you can quickly do that, the addition. I mean, just balance things up and then commit that, okay, we are agree that this is what we are committing to. We think that we can, we can achieve this and then you kick off your sprints. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's how it works. All right, and then your question regarding potential increment and increment. Mm. What is the difference? How does this work? Does this even make sense? What is potential increment, potential shippable increment? So, and, and then I just need you all to understand that now it's no longer potential shippable increment according to the latest version of the Scrum Guide, the 2020 version, for an increment to, for a potential increment to become an increment, it has to be valuable, shippable, usable. So before you'd only hear about potential shippable increment, potential shippable increment, but now it is potential shippable, usable, valuable increment. So as you complete the rest of your lessons, you will hear that a lot, you'll be tired of hearing that because I, it's just a song that I keep singing it because that's how important it is. Based on um, that understanding, who can help us clarify the difference between a potential increment and an increment and when does it, where does it fall in relation to sprint review events? Sure. 
You want to try, James? Yeah. Okay. Can you, can you ask the question again? Okay, so what's your understanding between um, potential increments? That's when I mentioned potential, just consider it as potential, shippable, usable, valuable increment. Valuable. What's the difference between a potential increment and an increment? And where does, what, where do they fall as far as print review is concerned? How do they come into play? Let me put it that way. Okay. Okay, so, um, okay, so I'm gonna kind of stretch the answer a little bit, so just hear me out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you have, in my, in my own understanding, so, so you have a, you have a in, increment maximum and increment minimum, I know, just, just hear, me, hear me out, right? Okay, we're hearing. Okay, so during, during every sprint, you have an increment, okay? Now, the increment from sprint one flows into sprint two. The increment from sprint two flows into sprint three until you come up to the final sprint, which is the end of that product, that product production cycle. Okay, now that final increment is what I would consider increment maximum because it, 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 it includes all the small, small increment from sprint one all the way to the end of that, uh, to the, let's say what, 10 sprint to the end of sprint 10. Now that increment maximum will be considered, will be the same as a feature. So the feature that was being worked on for that cycle is what you will get at the end of that increment uh, at the last sprint. That's one. Now, how does that how does that fit into the whole product review? Uh, I mean, sprint review. Well, so sprint review is well not also, but can be it's somewhat synonymous with demo as well. There is a demo that occurs that should occur or that typically occur during sprint review. Right, so that increment that was that big increment that was that was done at the end of the last sprint gets demoed to the stakeholders and and the, and everyone who is involved. Well, yeah, everybody, the stakeholder, you know, the team, the team demos it to the stakeholder and customers and everyone who is, you know, who uh, has a hand in it, right? So that that uh, uh, that that feature or maximum increment that was produced is obviously has to meet the definition of done. It has to meet all the. It has to hit all the milestones, right? To to be now that particular feature or increment must be obviously shippable, valuable, um, usable. And, you know, like we said, it may or may not be pushed forward, but it has to be, it has to meet all those criteria and be ready to, you know, and be ready for use or, custom, or application, if you will. All right. That's, 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 a, that's, that's a great try, um, James. Okay. Rich, right. Thank you. So who else has anything to add? What's your understanding or what's your thought process around this? I'll, I'll try. Um, my understanding is an increment is um, a successful sprint. So the sprint is complete in terms of the sprint backlog. Um, all of the tasks are, um, I guess, defined as done um, versus a um, potential increment, not necessarily all of the tasks in the sprint backlog are considered done by the product owner. Okay. That's, I mean, you've got this, the first thing you said is exactly what an increment is. So an increment is the potential increment that has been verified and reviewed and accepted by the stakeholders or the customers 
to meet the definition of done. So if they say meets the definition of done, it means that it is shippable, valuable, and usable, which means that, okay, the business can choose to ship it that same day after it's been reviewed. That's the meaning of shippable. That is, or you want to call it release. They can choose to release it or call it deploy, whatever term you choose to use, all of them means the same thing. And if, let's assume that if, so they can choose to push it to the customers or they can choose to put it on the shelf. That's their call. Our own is to make sure that it is shippable. That means we have to put it in a um, state that meets the definition of done. So, um, and then if they ship, if they choose to ship it, the customers should be able to derive value from it and they should be able to use it. That's what an increment, that's what the, the, a done increment is. Now, what is a potential increment? A potential increment is what you have achieved at the end of the sprint. So according to the team, it is an increment because you think that you've done it right. And then now you go for your sprint review. Why are you going for the sprint review? Because you want the customers to review what you think you've achieved and then, and then confirm that, okay, yes, it meets the definition of done. We are satisfied with this. So it passed the test. So this is great and, and they accept it. So once customers have accepted it after, during that sprint review, after that point, it becomes an increment. So until it has gone through the review, that is when the team members demo it and all of that and customers inspect it. Remember the pillars of scrum, transparency, inspection and adaptation. It really comes into play during the sprint review. That's why the sprint review is very important from the product standpoint. Because it's that only opportunity where the customers are able to see what you've done for the past two weeks and provide feedback if it actually, if actually it's what they ask from you. You know, so once they have reviewed it and they confirm it to, okay, this is great. This is exactly what we wanted. At that point, it becomes an increment. It's no longer a potential because it's been accepted. That's just what it is. I have a question. Go ahead, please. Um, so in terms of the work that the development team is doing during, towards the sprint, going into the sprint review, um, is it the job of the product owner to green light that before it goes into the review? Exactly, exactly. So um, technically there are two phases of acceptance which, because the product owner wants to also be very careful because you don't want to get in front of your stakeholders thinking that or just going by the word of the developers that, okay, this is great. We've done the work and it's correct. And then you just be like, okay. And then you bring it to your, in front of your stakeholders and in the process of demoing it, it's not working. It's not doing what they said it would do. That would not be good for your credibility as a team and especially as a product owner. So after the complete the stories and whatever they are working on, they move it to accept the accept column on the sprint board or you want to call it task board or whatever. The product owner has to go review it and then accept it before it goes to sprint review before they conduct their sprint review event. So this typically happens. So, so anytime um, a developer complete a, a user story and he has gone through the QA and everything like that and they think it's great, they push it to, there is a column that's called accept. So they continue to put it in there and then the PO is expected to go and pick them up and review them and then accept them. So the PO is reviewing them against the definition of done and against the acceptance criteria. So once the PO reviews and think, okay, it's good. Okay, the PO confirms. So that's, I would say that's pre-acceptance. That's what I can call it. And then now when they meet for their sprint review, which is this last but one event in the sprint, the PO will confidently, you know, be sitting there and telling all this nice stuff to their stakeholders that yes, this is what the team has accomplished. And then now the team will, will be expected to show the stakeholders. Demo only means show. So you show them and it's not a presentation or anything like that. You're not showing code. You're showing real working functionality. Let's assume that you were working on the software to make this phone work. You will not be showing the code in your system. No, you will be, you'll be showing them what you've done to this phone to make the cell, the, for example, the selfie functionality work. You show them that, okay, right now you can take selfie, you can change the colors, you can do, black and white background and all of that. That's what you're showing. 
you know, doing no, no PowerPoint presentation and slides and all of that. It's a very informal meeting for team members to just show what they've accomplished and to show that, okay, it's working. Now, when they show it and stakeholders are expected to, you know, inspect it, that's when the inspection comes in to inspect it and then provide feedback. So they are providing feed feedback must not only be negative, you know, they can provide feedback by confirming that, oh, wow, this is good. These people have done a great, great job. Or they can provide feedback and say, no, I asked only for a selfie that would do black and white. I didn't ask for a selfie that would do color. And then because the, the team is expected to take that feedback and adapt in the next sprint, you know, to really adjust to give the customer what they want. So let's assume that the, fun the selfie functionality on this phone as an example we are using. The team thought they did a great job. At that point, it's still a potential increment. Even when the PO has pre-accepted, it is still a potential increment. Until the customers, then let's assume that now they are in the review and the customers are like, nope, we want it only black and white. We don't want no color selfie. It's to, it means that it has it's not an increment yet because it's been rejected. So they will now, and if it still remains high priority, they would plan to bring it into the upcoming sprints work to fix that. And then let's say the next sprint now, let's assume that we are currently in sprint one. We are doing review for sprint one. Now we are moving to sprint two and they're expected to correct that. At the end of sprint two, they'll be doing sprint two review. They will still demo that. And then if it's now showing only white and black selfie, the customer accepts it, it becomes an increment. That's how it is. No All right, blessing and uh, no, not blessing. Michelle and team, does that clarify? That yeah. can, I, can I ask one more question? Please? Okay, go ahead, please. Um, so in regards to an increment, that is, we're looking at it as a, a bunch of um, tasks under the sprint backlog. So let's say that um, most of the tasks are considered done, but there's just one, there's just one task that is potentially, um, it's not meeting the expectation of the customer. Does that mean that the whole the whole um, increment was a potential, or is it just that one task? Okay, remember, I'm not sure what you're calling tasks. You know, there are user stories, and then there yeah, are tasks, yeah. right? Yeah. So, at so most of the time, we are measuring users. We are really looking from user story standpoint. We are not really looking at the tasks. The tasks are just the activities that you do in order to complete that user story. That's what the task is. So let's assume that you committed to, let's say, six story, user stories. You are only able to, I remember the way you craft good user stories, good user stories should be end to end, which means that by the time you're done with crafting that user story and they are done with developing it, it should be a working functionality. It shouldn't only be a design user story. It shouldn't only be a development user story. So that's how it works. So let's assume that out of the five user stories, you are able to, accomplish four. And then the, the last one you did 99.99%. You will not be demoing that one that, you, that you're not done with it yet. You only demo what you have completed, tested, and you think that it's done, it means it's mission of done. If you know that there is still one that is not done, even if it's 99.999% complete, you will not show the customers. So the four are now what you categorize as the increment. It may be any kind of functionality. It may be doing the four, it may be four different functionalities. It may be that it's just one functionality. The four user stories is one functionality. It may be that the five user stories is five different functionalities, you see? So it just depends on what the developers understand as what they are doing. But the point is it should be valuable, it should be usable and it should be shippable. So that's what an increment is. So don't 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 worry about what the tasks are. We don't even consider it that way. We look at okay, is this usable? Is this function? Is this a real functionality, or is it just a bunch of tasks that doesn't add any value? So if you're looking at it as task or focusing at task, it means that you're you're tempted to want to be worrying about output instead of outcome. We want to achieve outcome at the end of the sprints. That is value. We are value driven as opposed to output driven. So that's how that works. All right. Um, 
now thank you all so much for um following this edition um this was just um an excerpt from part of our um scrum master training um classes so i hope you enjoyed it and um if you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring coaching services training please reach out to us check on the top of this um, video or on the description box to find our direct contact information and reach out to us we might be able to help you especially if you're looking to break into the scrum master job market you have um, um certification for a while and you struggling because truly it's not easy you know that's what we specialize in helping people um, accomplish and if you're um, thinking of um, just getting started you're not sure how to go about it please um, reach out to us and we'll be able to help you and um, for our new viewers please do not forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell we always appreciate you and um, hope to talk to you next time